I cannot live without books. Do you want to know who you are? Don't ask. Act. Action will delineate and define you. I predict future happiness for Americans, if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Honesty is the first chapter of the book Wisdom. The legitimate powers of government extend to such acts only as are injurious to others. It does mean no injury for my neighbor to say there are twenty gods or no god. It neither picks my pocket nor breaks my leg. The man who reads nothing at all is better educated than the man who reads nothing but newspapers. I sincerely believe that banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies, and that the principle of spending money to be paid by posterity, under the name of funding, is but swindling futurity on a large scale. On matters of style, swim with the current, on matters of principle, stand like a rock. The most valuable of all talents is that of never using two words when one will do. I'm a greater believer in luck and I find the harder I work the more I have of it. We in America do not have government by the majority. We have government by the majority who participate. I would rather be exposed to the inconveniences attending too much liberty than to those attending too small a degree of it. Our civil rights have no dependence on our religious opinions any more than our opinions in physics or geometry. History in general, only informs us what bad government is. I have observed, indeed, generally, that while in Protestant countries the defections from the Platonic Christianity of the priests is to deism, in Catholic countries they are to atheism. Diderot, d'Alembert, d'Albach, Condorcet, are known to have been among the most virtuous of men. Their virtue, then, must have had some other foundation than the love of God. Nothing gives one person so much advantage over another as to remain always cool and unruffled under all circumstances. The people cannot be all, and always, well informed. The part which is wrong will be discontented, in proportion to the importance of the facts they misconceive. If they remain quiet under such misconceptions, it is lethargy, the forerunner of death to the public liberty, what country before ever existed a century and a half without a rebellion. And what country can preserve its liberties if their rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. The remedy is to set them right as to facts, pardon and pacify them. What signify a few lives lost in a century or two? The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It is its natural manure. Determine never to be idle. No person will have occasion to complain of the want of time, who never loses any. It is wonderful how much may be done, if we are always doing. I had rather be shut up in a very modest cottage with my books, my family and a few old friends, dining on simple bacon, and letting the world roll on as it liked, than to occupy the most splendid post, which any human power can give. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free, in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. I know no safe depository of the ultimate powers of the society but the people themselves, and if we think them not enlightened enough to exercise their control with a wholesome discretion, the remedy is not to take it from them, but to inform their discretion by education. This is the true corrective of abuses of constitutional power. As you say of yourself, I too am an Epicurean. I consider the genuine, not the imputed, doctrines of Epicurus as containing everything rational and moral philosophy which Greece and Rome have left us. The whole art of government consists in the art of being honest. There is nothing more unequal than the equal treatment of unequal people. All should be laid open to you without reserve, for there is not a truth existing which I fear or would wish unknown to the whole world. But friendship is precious, not only in the shade but in the sunshine of life, and thanks to a benevolent arrangement of things, the greater part of life is sunshine. I will recur for proof to the days we have lately passed.
On these indeed the sun shone brightly. If you want something you've never had you must be willing to do something you've never done. A Decalogue of Canons for Observation in Practical Life 1. Never put off to tomorrow what you can do today. 2. Never trouble another with what you can do yourself. 3. Never spend your money before you have it. 4. Never buy a thing you do not want, because it is cheap, it will be dear to you. 5. Take care of your cents, dollars will take care of themselves. 6. Pride costs us more than hunger, thirst and cold. 7. We never repent of having eat too little. 8. Nothing is troublesome that one does willingly. 9. How much pain have cost us the evils which have never happened. 10. Take things always by their smooth handle. 11. Think as you please, and so let others, and you will have no disputes. 12. When angry, count 10. Before you speak, if very angry, 100. Timid men prefer the calm of despotism to the tempestuous sea of liberty. The equal rights of man, and the happiness of every individual, are now acknowledged to be the only legitimate objects of government. I think one travels more usefully when they travel alone, because they reflect more. It is an axiom in my mind, that our liberty can never be safe but in the hands of the people themselves, and that two of the people with a certain degree of instruction, this it is the business of the state to effect, and on a general plan. The spirit of resistance to government is so valuable on certain occasions, that I wish it to be always kept alive. It will often be exercised when wrong, but better so than not to be exercised at all. I like a little rebellion now and then. It is like a storm in the atmosphere. Do not bite at the bait of pleasure till you know there is no hook beneath it. I was bold in the pursuit of knowledge, never fearing to follow truth and reason to whatever results they led. To compel a man to furnish funds for the propagation of ideas he disbelieves and abhors is sinful and tyrannical. Tyranny is defined as that which is legal for the government but illegal for the citizenry. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. I like the dreams of the future better than the history of the past. How little do my countrymen know what precious blessings they are in possession of, and which no other people on earth enjoy. Every day is lost in which we do not learn something useful. Man has no nobler or more valuable possession than time. I am increasingly persuaded that the earth belongs exclusively to the living and that one generation has no more right to bind another to its laws and judgments than one independent nation has the right to command another. I never considered a difference of opinion in politics, in religion, in philosophy, as cause for withdrawing from a friend. What a stupendous, what an incomprehensible machine is man, who can endure toil, famine stripes, imprisonment and death itself and vindication of his own liberty, and the next moment, inflict on his fellow men a bondage, one hour of which is fraught with more misery than ages of that which he rose in rebellion to oppose. History, I believe, furnishes no example of a priest-ridden people maintaining a free civil government. This marks the lowest grade of ignorance of which their civil as well as religious leaders will always avail themselves for their own purposes. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government. The will of the people is the only legitimate foundation of any government, and to protect its free expression should be our first object. Our liberty depends on the freedom of the press, and that cannot be limited without being lost. I hold it that a little rebellion now and then is a good thing, and as necessary in the political world as storms in the physical. Peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If once the people become inattentive to the public affairs, you and I, 
and Congress and assemblies, judges and governors, shall all become wolves. It seems to be the law of our general nature, in spite of individual exceptions. Some men look at constitutions with sanctimonious reverence, and deem them like the Ark of the Covenant, too sacred to be touched. They ascribe to the men of the preceding age a wisdom more than human, and suppose what they did to be beyond amendment, but I know also, that laws and institutions must go hand in hand with the progress of the human mind. As that becomes more developed, more enlightened, as new discoveries are made, new truths disclosed, and manners and opinions change with the change of circumstances, institutions must advance also, and keep pace with the times. The natural progress of things is for liberty to yield, and government to gain ground. I hope that we shall crush in its birth the aristocracy of our moneyed corporations which dare already to challenge our government to a trial of strength, and bid defiance to the laws of our country. He who knows nothing is closer to the truth than he whose mind is filled with falsehoods and errors. The constitution of most of our states, and of the United States, assert that all power is inherent in the people, that they may exercise it by themselves, that it is their right and duty to be at all times armed. Experience declares that man is the only animal which devours his own kind, for I can apply no milder term to the governments of Europe, and to the general prey of the rich on the poor. He who permits himself to tell a lie once, finds it much easier to do it the second time. Every human being must be viewed according to what it is good for. For not one of us, no, not one, is perfect. And were we to love none who had imperfection, this world would be a desert for our love. 